exciting day for us. Our guest speaker today, uh, I've known this lady for about five years. Uh, not only is she is a tremendous woman, not only beautiful, but extremely smart, the hardest working woman that I know in the industry. She has literally made millions of dollars. And who else can learn from this lady with success, right? Success breeds success. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first guest speaker. She is not only our top genetic money earner, she is the number one genetic distributor in the whole world. Can we? Thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, you know, on a weekday, that's pretty good, all of you to be here. And I want to welcome and thank all of you uh, to be here. Now, I hope most of you are distributors, right? Or all of you are distributors, right? Yes. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> well, you got to pay to get trained. Just kidding. Well, I want to welcome and thank all of you coming. I know that there's many things that we could do, but the fact that you are here this morning um, says a lot. And, and I am very humbled to stand in front of you to share with you this first hands-on training because you know the last 16 months I've traveled the world tra close to I think 12 countries the last 12, uh, last 16 months and really to lay out the foundation for this company and and so far in 16 months this is far above and beyond what I bargained for I didn't know that the opportunity would touch lives of many across the globe at this magnitude I mean the product is absolutely amazing and we're witnessing I mean mo incredible momentum throughout the world with this opportunity and so um, as I the last couple of weeks ever since I got back I've been doing a lot of training one-on-one -on -one sessions and I realized that there's, no matter what meetings I've done, it's seeming, seemingly, it's a similar question to keep popping up. And it's those simple foundations that how to really take it hands on from step A to step B. And so I really believe that's time now that we have, you know, painted a world, you know, last the last 16 months is shipping product to 60 countries, I really believe it's time to really give everybody um, a vehicle and, and the tools of how to really build this business and the building block of this business. So, and I really want to, um, one of my vision and goals is to really want to bring light, a positive light to direct selling, to network marketing. As we most of us know that over the last whatever many years, that direct selling or network marketing doesn't have a good rep. True or not true? So I think it's time to really, I mean, I believe we have a lot of different walks of life in this, in this room. We have professionals, we have doctors, we have lawyers in this, in this room. And, and we have average people, a stay-at-home mom such as myself. So what I want to do is give you the tools in all the last 20 years, almost 20 years of my life, and, and in this industry to share with you how and what I did. And I will try to do it in compact in two and a half hours. Is that okay with you, everyone? So let's do this now. Before we begin, and, and this is a really hands-on workshop. I really hope that you guys have pens and paper. This is very important, okay? So if some of you don't have pens and paper, please raise your hand. We'll have someone pass out paper for you. Okay, and, and if you just follow the roadmap that we're going to share with you, I believe it could be quite life-changing, okay, as it did for me. Because everything I'm pouring my heart out to you is 18 years ago, or 19 years ago actually now. I was a struggling entrepreneur. I got laid off. I, I had a college degree, I went to UCLA, <clears throat> went to UC Irvine. Half the years of education, found myself at a crossroad. And you know, it was a blessing in disguise someone told me about network marketing. And so, uh, the last 19 years as an entrepreneur went from a struggling entrepreneur to become a multi-millionaire. I'm gonna share with you my journeys and the step that I took. And hopefully you don't have to repeat some of the mistakes that I made over the years, okay? So with that, everybody have a pen and paper? Okay, let's get started. Now, we are very excited because this is the beginning of 2011, okay? So I want all of you, I would request this, all of you, to really to have an open mind. Because everything I'm gonna share with you, if you could soak it in, and if you apply the concept and the techniques that we share with you, it could ch to change your life, like it change your mind, okay? So with that, let's set some goals for 2011. Now, these are very personal, personal goals that's unique to yourself and to your situation, okay? So, 2011, I want you to write down for your goals, what would you, now, I mean, you know, there's different ways to measure success. And, you know, let's bring it to reality. Now, a lot of people nowadays, you know, because of the economy, they want to make money. And we all do want to make money. And so, because with money, we can do a lot of good things to society. So, with that, let's set some goals. 2011, what would you like to make in six months? And what would you like to make in 12 months? So, 
right, right, you know, don't judge where you are now. Forget about that. Just if you have your wish list, what might that be? Okay, and I know some of you are pretty wealthy sitting right here, okay? That's okay. You can make a lot of money. You can donate to good causes, okay? We can do a lot of things. If you don't know a good cause, I'll share with you some good causes. We can do it together, okay? So now, 2011, let's set some goals. What would you like to make in six months? Write it down. Don't, 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 don't say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Just if you have your wish, what might that be? In six months, what would you like to make a month? Or what would make you happy? What will solve some of your issues? You know, it's the old saying goes, you know what? Money doesn't buy everything. But, you know what, when you don't have money, it's a lack of air, okay? And so, you know, um, so now, six months, what would you like to achieve per month? And in 12 months, what would you like to achieve? This is very important. I can show you how to get there. Now, you're gonna have something that's attainable in the beginning, start taking baby steps to get there, okay? So now, how many of you would like to, now, are you, will you all write down the number? Yeah. It's very important, because you don't set goals, you wouldn't know if you get lost. You know, think about this. If we don't know where we're going, like this morning, if I didn't know I was coming to Rosemead, to Denny's, I'll be aimlessly driving around, and how would I know I'm lost, right? So you need to write down your goals, and I hope that you wrote down your goals, okay? What would you like to accomplish? Now, how many of you would like to know the magic? What is that magic? How many of you would like to achieve those goals that you put up here? How many of you would like to do that? Okay, the magic I'm gonna share with you, and that's part of the training today. That magic, to get this, is you've got to believe. You've got to believe that you could achieve these goals that you set. Not only believe, really, 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 really believe. See, some people say, oh yeah, I believe I can do that. It's just talk. You really need to soak it in and absorb it into all your fiber, your being. Say, you know what? I know I'm going to do that. Believe plus attitude. You got to have the right positive attitude towards it. And last but not least, actions. Because if you have a dream and you don't back it up by action, guess what? It's only a wish, okay? It ain't going to happen. But so now, are we clear with this thing so far? Simple enough? Yes. Yeah, everything I share with you, most of you know all the stuff already. But the difference is perhaps lacking that little thing that make it to take action, make it click, okay? All of us, everything I share with you, you already knew, okay? But it's hopefully through the training, it kind of give a little spark in the area that may be lacking, okay? So <clears throat> with that, let's take a look at reality now. So this is where you wanna go. Okay, now next step is, let's do a reality check, self-assessment, okay? Where are you today? And you know, some of you might be uncomfortable, but you know, I really believe in this last 18 years of my journey, it's little processes, little events of awakening that really got me to where I am. So, you know, in order to make a change in life, we first must be aware of the situation. Because if you're not aware, you can't change. So first thing first, reality check. Let's do a reality check, okay? Now, where you are now, let's look at your income. What are the normal sources of income that people get? How do people usually make money? Work, Work the job, right? Work or job, okay? Now, what other sources might they have? Side job or retirement income? So some of you may... Um, <laughs> Maybe some of you are retired, okay? Retirement income, okay? Now, some of you in here are business owners, right? So from your business? Maybe what? Child support, alimony, we call them miscellaneous, okay? Now, I want you to list your source of income today. This will, if you really do this exercise with me, I know some of you might not be comfortable, but I tell you what to make a change, to really begin the process of realization that we need to make a change. Because you just follow my way and I promise you it will make sense as I go through, okay? Now, so that's your, your income. Add it all together, whatever the number might be, okay? Now, next thing is, I want you to list all your expenses. What's the, most, the biggest expense most people find? Mortgage. Mortgage. Mortgage or what? Rent, right? Mortgage or rent, okay? What else? 
expense? Child expense? That could add up, okay? Children, expenses, education, whatever that might be, okay? What, what else? Insurance, right? It could be medical insurance, your property insurance, Life insurance. life insurance, we have a lot of life insurance agents right here, okay? So whatever insurance, you group it together, okay? Now, you know what, some of you, when, when, when you by the end of this exercise, you'll go, oh my goodness, I need to make a change, okay? Now, what else? Food, right? Living expenses, food. Okay? Gasoline. Auto payment, car payment. Auto, what else? Taxes. We make money when we pay taxes, right? Your property tax, your income tax. I want you to, whatever things that I missed, I want you know your expenses. I don't, oh, and then what else? Debt, how many of you have debt? Some of you, okay? Now, debt, meaning credit card payments. Okay, I believe a lot of people have them, okay? Now, 18 years ago, I had a lot of them. I had a lot of credit cards. Thank goodness I'm debt free, okay? now. So I want you to make a list of all the stuff right here. All your expenses, adding up, add them up, okay? I want you to take your income minus your expenses. That will be your net. My question to you is how long, I mean, you really have to do your own math. And that's why, I mean, it might be uncomfortable in front of a crowd like this, but it's very important. If you want to make a change, doesn't matter what it is, you want to make a change, it's important that you look at your self-assessment, your reality check. Where am I today, financially, okay? So, you, as you look at this, you have to ask yourself, yourself the question, how long have you had this problem or this challenge? This number that you're looking at, your take-home pay, if any, okay? How is your take-home pay compared to what you set out to do. If it's far, you need to really say, you know what, I need to make a change. It is uncomfortable to face it, but this is very crucial for people to say, you know what, I, I need to wake up, I really need to do something, okay? And so, with this picture, I hope you get a better picture of where you stand today. If you keep doing these things right here, is it gonna take you to where you want to go, right here. Okay? So, this, this is, I mean, this is my very first moment of, of awareness and awakening within my own self. Many, many years ago, I worked a job. When I got laid off, I got nothing to show for. I mean, it was a different processes that woke me up. It was first, I, I did this. Then the second thing was I was pursuing opportunity. And after years of pursuing the opportunity, I finally came down to a point where I had to look at all my credit card bills. And I said, is that vehicle that I was on, is it taking me to where I want to go? And if it's not, we got to do something. We got to find a solution. So is this coming across so far? This is very important when you sit down with your people. Because you know what? To me, network marketing is about life. It's a journey of, of evolving, about changes in life, okay? So the sol part of the solution to overcome that situation, the income and expenses thing, is we either decrease our expenses and increase our income, right? Yeah. Now, most people say, I'm living bare bone. How can I cut any more on expenses? Well, let's look at increasing our income, okay? So what is the likelihood of you increasing your income at your job? And your, with your retirement, okay? With your retirement, your business, or your, inve your investment. I think it's a lot more likely to look at a business to help you increase your income. True or not true? Yeah. So when you look at a business, let's evaluate what kind of business. This is very important. I, this is the most basic thing that you can do with your brand new people when they come on board. To really assess the situation and evaluate where they are financially, okay? Now let's quickly look at traditional business versus MLM. Okay, this is one of the ways how you can overcome some of the objections and then you yourself got to understand the very basics. See, I bet you, you know, most of the time when you talk to people about MLM, what's the three most common objections? The three most top objections, I don't have what? Time, I don't have money, or I don't like to sell to my friends. These are three most common, you know what? I can bet you 99.9% of the time, they don't join you not because they don't have time, not because they don't have money, be not because they don't want to sell their friends. You know what it's because? 
because they don't understand what MLM is all about, or they have the wrong perception or the wrong understanding of direct selling. They didn't understand that this business model would help build a long-term residual income. It could help build quite substantial amount of income. Okay, and so with that, let's take a quick look. Traditional business does it require big capital? Meaning investment? Absolutely, right? High, right? Now with MLM, it's relatively low. It's minimal, right? What about risk? There's a lot more risk in conventional business. True or not true? Yes. High risk here, low risk, right? What up? What, or low or no risk? Okay. Now I'm being very, very conservative. Okay. The only risk if you, you chose the wrong company, the only risk is you lose some of your friends. Okay. <laughs> so. But anyway, now, what about time? Time that's required. This is pretty committed. If you own your own conventional business, you are committed. If you invest half a million dollars in running your own business, are you committed? You better be commit committed. But with MLM, you can work your own flexible hours. Flexible hours, okay? Now, what are some of the factors? What about liability? Big. This is minimal, okay? What about experience required? If you run your own conventional business, you better know what you're doing, right? So, yes, experience required in MLM? No. All it requires is open mind and the willingness to learn, okay? Now, what about would you, if you open your own conventional business, do you normally have a coach that will help you and teach you? No, your competitor would not teach you anything because if you, you teach your competitor, guess what? He or she may be more successful than knock you out of business, right? So you have a coach? No, usually no, okay? MLM, yes, okay? What about a system? You have to create your own. You have to make your own. MLM, we have a proven system, okay? Now, more importantly, the last thing is called leverage. With a conventional business, you do have some sort of leverage, but it's limited. What do I mean by leverage, okay? Leverage, when you have your staff and your employee working for you, you know, yeah, certainly sometimes you could be out playing, playing golf and your staff working for you. But do you have true, true leverage when your office is closed? No, you don't, okay? But with MLM, you have the leverage, whereby you can leverage around the global economy, especially nowadays with e-commerce, okay? So, Pretty much we know the advantage of MLM. Now I believe this kind of education is very important. You know, as I watched the last 19 years, I saw a major shift in perception, in awareness of MLM. I have seen a new wave of professionals. You know, before many, 20 years ago, you know, people look at MLM as people that are uneducated, people that are broke, people that are, that are unemployed, people that are really hopeless and helpless. Many, many years ago, people look at MLM that way. But nowadays, if you look at MLM, there are many professionals, doctors, estheticians, lawyers, people from all walks of life, they are pursuing MLM because you know why? They have tried this way and it's not getting them to the things that they want in life. You know, it's like going back to this reality check. And I want you to really go back to that, the reality check. If you look at the reality check, now some of you are very fortunate, okay, in your reality check, you are coming out ahead. Your income exceeds your expense. Congratulations. But my question to you is how many hours are you dedicating to that? Are you putting in? Are you spending quality time with your children to make the kind of money that you're, you're blessed to make? And are you truly happy? Is that really giving you true meaning in life? That's some, something that really drives you towards where you want to go in life. So these are very cool questions that you have to ask yourself. Because you know what, if you don't get the foundation solid, because over the years I've seen too many people, they join, they disappear. How many of you seen people like that? You, you call them, they don't even answer your phone. Because the foundation hasn't been laid. And I think this is very important that you, you get people to understand that, have a right understanding of direct selling, of network marketing, okay? So now, we know that MLM is a great vehicle to do it, okay? now. So, but the key is choosing the right MLM, okay? Now, there are five, based on my years of experience, that there are five pillars of success that each and every MLM company must have in place if that company were to last. Five, okay? Now, lacking each one of them ain't gonna cut it, okay? So number one, so the five pillars of success. 
Number one, timing. Timing is very, very important. Timing, is, does the market have such a demand for the product? Does the market have such a demand for the opportunity? And you talk about from an opportunity standpoint, we couldn't find better timing. I mean, last month, California is record high. Unemployment rate of what, 12.3% in California alone. I mean, it's unbelievable. So you know what? That is a great opportunity for us to help other people to bring from unemployment to giving people hope, okay? So timing. Now, timing for this product, there are how many baby boomers just in the U.S. alone? A lot. I mean, I forgot the statistic. I, mean, I forgot how many people turn, you know, become a, 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 a baby boomer every so many seconds, okay? So now, timing. Timing is very crucial. And the line of product that we have, it's perfect timing to hit this market now, okay? The second thing is management. The company. Management. Do they have the experience to provide the infrastructure for us to grow and sustain the business. See, you know, you could have a company that's got awesome timing, but if management doesn't have the experience, it's like you out in the field. See, management and the field must work together to create something. Why? Because we are in the field, we are their eyes and ears, because we are out in the field. So corporate must have the experience and the expertise to provide a system, an infrastructure, to support us, to make it grow. So this is very key on management, okay? Now, number three, product. The product's gotta be unique that nobody else has. The product's gotta be so unique that you can't find it at Costco. You can't find it anywhere else, but through the independent distributors. Because if you have a Me Too product, why should they buy it from you? You gotta have the product story, the uniqueness, okay? The second thing is very important. To make a MLM model work, the product must be consumable, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you why that is important. The beauty of direct selling, of network marketing, is to provide people with long-term residual income. You do something one time, but you get paid month after month. Now, if you have a product that's got a lifetime warranty, then they buy one time, no need to repeat sale. Would you have repeat in income? No. Uh -uh. You, you sell something one time, a lifetime warranty, guess what? You have to find a new, another customer every time. But if you have a product that's consumable, something that they eat and drink, I mean, you know what? I don't know about you. Reserve, I take three or four a day. You talk about consumability. That's huge. I mean, can you have the vision to imagine that every household that you know of that's using reserve or luminous, it is huge. I mean, I mean, I had the vision the other day, I was in Taiwan, and I was in the elevator, and I saw little packets of used reserve in the trash can. And I go, cha-ching. You know, I, I mean, I said, wouldn't really it be cool if everywhere else you go, you see a trash can, that's a reserve packet right there. You know what that means? That means someone is making money. That's consumability, okay? Especially with a model such as this. If people consume one bottle luminous a month, you're gonna watch out some amazing stuff happening to your pocketbook, okay? Now, consumability is very important in the MLM model, okay? Now, number four, compensation plan. The comp plan has gotta be fair that rewards people at all levels. Not only a certain type of people make money. It's gotta be a plan that rewards all levels of commitment. If you wanna make a few, a few hundred dollars extra a month, it's there for you. If you wanna make a few thousand a month, it's there for you. If you wanna make a whole lot of money, you know what? It is also available. Question is, will you, are you willing to dedicate time and resources to make it happen, okay? So conversation plan. Number five, leadership. Leadership is very important. Leadership is the heart and soul of a company. Leadership, it's important to have leadership to have the experience, the vision, the dedication, and the heart for the group. Because leadership is a heart and soul. And I have worked, the last 19 years, I have worked with many, many people across the globe. But I can tell you one thing. This is the best team I've ever assembled in the history of my 19 year career. I have people that have never, and you know what, so far with Jeunesse, all the success that we have built is with people that who have never really done, who have never like had big, big success in network marketing, who's not like major, major mover and shaker, but it's a platform transforming an average person to become a top money earner. 
to me, it's a, a tremendous reward. And I have never ever worked with people with the credibility that they bring to the table. I mean, some of you, if you really spend some time and get to know the people in this room, you'll be amazed, the caliber of people, the professionalism of people that we have in this room. It is absolutely bar none. I mean, a lot of times over the last 19 years, I mean, sometimes when you look at a video of an MLM company, all the rah, rah, rahs, all the outside, it's got no substance. But when you, when you really get, take time to get to know the people that you work with, I believe you'll fall in love with the people that you're working with because they are phenomenal individuals. Outside of business, they are absolutely phenomenal individuals, okay? So leadership, we have that right here in, in, in this company, okay? So these five things, they all have to coexist. If one is missing, can go long term, okay? So with that, how do you choose the right company? Well, we have all that. But timing is also very crucial, so I'm gonna dedicate when is the best time to join a company, okay? So I believe this is very important as you go out and build your business. As with any Fortune 500 company, there are four phases of a business cycle, okay? Doesn't matter if it's Nike, Coca-Cola, there are four phases of business, different business cycles, okay? And it goes something like this. Now, in the very beginning, and by the way, Dr. Charles King, he got his PhD from Harvard University. He actually teaches direct selling, network marketing at University of Illinois, okay? And he talked about this. There are four phases in any business cycle, okay? And there's no different than direct selling, okay? Now, in the beginning phase is what we call formulation. That's a, when a company is formed, formed, okay? That's a company that they have to get their act together to start building branding, because nobody knows the company, okay? Now, that's the beginning. Now. Then the second phase is called concentration. After the company's been running for a while, now many years ago, Dr. King had, had a number for when it hits momentum. But I believe as time has changed, economy has changed a lot. So, you know, the uh, uh, concentration is when you test a product, when you know that you have established the niche. That's exactly where we are now. We have found the niche on how to pitch the product. When the testimonials are out now, we now have a niche market on how to market this opportunity, on how to market the product. So the concentration phase, that's the second phase. The third phase is called, the first phase right here is called momentum, okay? Momentum. That means with or without you, guess what's gonna happen? This company has it's already branded itself. People are aware of it, people want a, want a part of it. It's just like Reebok. How many of you remember the Reebok tennis shoes? When Reebok first came out many, many years ago, they were selling a, ten, a pair of tennis shoes for 60 bucks US. That's many years ago. People look at Reebok like, that's crazy. Nobody's gonna buy a, tennis shoe, a pair of tennis shoes for 60 bucks. Well, guess what? When Reebok, when Reebok, the tennis shoes, when they become a brand, when they hit momentum, guess what? Every other athlete, every other sports enthusiast, enthusiast guess what they wanted? They wanted a Reebok, okay? So that was, it's just every company going through this. So when a company hit momentum, it's gonna skyrocket to at new heights. Now, then the last phase of a business is called stability. Okay, now, so some of the companies are stable, stability. Some of the people have gone through this. Now, the most risky thing to get involved with the MLM company is right here. Because 99.9% .9 of the company, MLM company, they don't even make it to the first year. So thank goodness, we made it to the first year, okay? <laughs> so now, that's the most risky, most risky, but if you hang on that risk and you roll this curve, you're gonna ride the momentum. You're gonna reap the reward. Now, where do you suppose the most money I made? In this graph right here, where do you suppose? Right here, in the moment. This is where all the money I made, in the momentum phase, okay? Now, when it hits stability, but keep in mind, we now play in a global marketplace. You can repeat the same life cycle in the USA, in Taiwan, in China, in, in Korea. I mean, different countries we participate in, okay? But this, doesn't matter what company you go with, this is four phases business life cycle. Now let's look at some of the big MLM company. What, what's the big MLM company? Amway. Where do you suppose Amway is? Stability, right here, Amway. What about Herbalife? Right here. Okay? What about New Skin? Right here. No need juice. No need juice. No need, TNI, okay? What about Market America? Avon. 
Yusana. Mary K. Mary K. Okay, they're all right here. But when will the money make? All right here. When is the best time to join? Right here. We are 16 months into the program. Okay, and yet we have changed lives of many across the globe, not only from product standpoint, but also from an opportunity standpoint, money standpoint. Okay, so this is where the time to participate, the time to engage, you just got to ride it. See, when the wave is up, I mean, when the testimonials are out, you can help, but you got to catch on the wave and you got to ride it. So this is very important. When you go out there and showcase the opportunity with other people, you've got to let them understand where we are today. Where we are today, we're just about to hit the concentration stage in this company. I mean, when we first got started with Samson and Tina and Winnie and, and, and Robert, we had no idea what we were pitching. They talk about growth factors. And I had zero idea of what growth factor were. I had no idea. I just hoped and prayed that that thing would work, okay? And so, but you know what, it worked beautifully, okay? Now, so this is the four stages of life cycle of a business. So is this clear so far? All right, next. So now, understanding you picked the right company, let's go out and let's show how to work this deal, okay? Is this helping you guys so far? Yes. All right, now, so given understanding you chose the right company, what do I do next? I, mean, I think a lot of you here today say, what's my action plan, what do I do next? So I'm gonna give you a plan of actions. And it is very crucial that you, and you know what, the plan of action is extremely simple. It is so simple to do, and yet, is simpler not to do, okay? So it's choice is up to you. So action plan. Are you ready for the action plan? Yes. All right, now, action plan. Number one, <clears throat> you gotta set your goal. What do you hope to accomplish with this business? Don't think about, I don't know if I can do that, I don't know if I, I don't, it's not your job to judge how. If you know your why, the how-to will take care of itself. You know, when I engage back in this industry, see, I gave birth seven and a half years ago to my child. And so I left the industry, and when I got back to the industry about five and a half years ago, one of my goals was to retire my husband. I mean, he's a medical doctor. He's busy, has a work in a hospital in the daytime, and his own medical practice in the afternoon. And so when I told my, when I told my husband, I said, honey, I'm going to retire you from the hospital, he was like chuckling, he was laughing. I mean, in a good way, he's like, yeah, a housewife is a retired medical doctor. And I'm deep inside my heart, I said, you watch me, I'm gonna do it. How? I don't know, okay? I just say that I'm gonna do it, okay? So uh, that was one of my goals. And the other thing that I, I, I was inspired to do was that my husband always, always wanna do charity causes, good causes for community and whatnot. And so it's something that I long to do. You know, I wanna build schools, I wanna build hospitals. These are things that are very near and dear to my heart. But as a housewife, I can't make money do all any of that stuff, but I just needed a vehicle. So I had set some very clear goals. Before, when I, when I, right when I engaged in the business, I said, listen, I need to set some goals because those goals will help drive you through the ups and downs of the business. In life, do we have ups and downs? Yes. Every day, okay? Well, what make you get out of bed every day to do something? It's your, you, we all have something that we have to do to sustain, our, to, to preserve life, to sustain our lifestyle, okay? So your goal is very important, goal setting, okay? When you set your goal, you've got to what? Believe. You got to believe. You know, you, when we always talk about, when we do training, that you gotta believe, you gotta believe. That, well, how do I believe the company? I don't know the company that long. No, 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 it has nothing to do with the company. <laughs> you gotta believe that you are meant to do something special in this life. You got to believe that you could be somebody. See, 19 years, I wasn't day one be a multi be, oh, I was I became multi-million. No, it took years of struggling entrepreneurship to get to where I am today. You know, no matter how down I was, I always have this dream of saying, you know what, I'm gonna be somebody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna travel the world, I, I'm gonna be a multi-millionaire. See, I believe it's so hard, no matter how, when I was going through down, down times, no money in my pocket, when my mom and dad say, listen, you know what, you gotta either go back to school, or you gotta stop, just stop dreaming, just get on reality. And I told my mom and dad, no, I'm, I'm meant to be somebody, I know I can be somebody, I know. I just, I just know, I mean, I don't know, it's just something in me that I, I knew. I was meant to be special, I was meant to be somebody, and I believe each and every single one of you are meant to be special. The key thing is, can we, do we have 
the environment to solicit that desire out of you. To say, you know what? I see my real picture now where I am today. I really need to do something. You know, some of you might have a lot of money. It might not be money. It might be the time that you, you're looking after. It might be some meaning in your life. Maybe there's a voice somewhere that you want to do something. I don't know. Only you knew what that is that you need to fulfill. Okay? So now, believe. You just got to believe. No matter what your current circumstances, you got to believe. I remember, you know, Robert is in San Francisco right now. But I remember Robert. I, met, I mean, I've known Robert for many, many years. And some of you heard his story. When I met him, we connected with him about five and a half years ago. He met with me in Roland Heights at Starbucks Coffee. I said, Robert, I found the platform. I said, you know what? We're going to make it huge. You're going to be a rich man. He goes, Kim, forget about rich. I can't even, he goes, I'm swamped with bills. Okay, he got many, many credit cards. And I think he owed over 200000 in debt, including credit cards and money that he owed people that around him. And one of his, uh, uh, he borrowed from me. Who was One of the person was me, okay? And so, I, and he goes, Kim, all I wanted was to make an extra 5000 a month so I can stay afloat, so I can put off the creditor from calling me. And I said, Robert, you focus with me. You're going to follow these simple steps I'm going to share with you. And don't deviate, because over the years I've known him, he always is very creative. He want to do it his own way, because he thinks I'm smart, I'm going to do it my own way. So I said, this time around, you ain't got no time to play with. I said, listen, you work with me, six months, you, you watch your life transformed. Six months later, that was one of my best calls and one of my best lunch. He bought me lunch. And he told me, Kim, six months. He said, Kim, I am debt free. Six months. Also, Tina can share the same story with you. So if you just follow these simple, simple steps, you've got to believe that whatever that dream is that you have, you've got to believe. And not only believe, and I mean really, 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 really believe. And when you believe, it just, it just gives yourself that hope you will have that, it creates that, that feeling, that energy, that, that enthusiasm. It's that enthusiasm when you talk to other people, that's what propels, what get, what get people into action, okay? So believe, really, really believe, okay? Third, is you got to have a business plan. What is a business plan? You ready for the big deal, business plan? You ready? Yes. Okay, you know, are you sure you're all ready? Yes. All right, okay. That business plan is your list, okay? It is the simplest thing to do, and most people don't do. Make a list. And I, I, I've done training the last couple of days with different groups, and they say, oh, I got that list. I said, where? It's in here. <laughs> I said, listen, when you are excited, when you are pumped, that list is in here. But the very first signs of negativity to come your way, those lists in your head magically disappeared. <laughs> See, and I want you to think about this. If you today, you own your own business and you want to get a loan from a bank and you go to your banker to apply for a loan, what was, what's the first thing your banker will ask you for? Your business plan, show me your business plan. He says, oh, come on, Lisa, you and I go way back. My business plan is up here. You didn't get the loan? Nah, no. So you need to make a list, okay? Now, as you make a list, and by the way, I'm in the process of putting up a workbook together that kind of encapsulate all the, the, the things that we talk about today. So like for example, the reality check worksheet, we have it right here. So that book will be available hopefully soon within a month, okay? Then some of the stuff that we talk about right here. Now, let's talk about that business plan, that list. That list of that, most people say that's in their head. That list is right here. And you can make the list, and you know, you really need to jog some memories, okay? Don't prejudge and don't say that, oh, you know, they will, they will, won't join. You do not know, okay? So this is your prospect. Don't turn down the opportunity for your prospect. It's not your right. You don't have the right to turn them down, okay? So let them turn them, them, themselves down, okay? Your prospect list, their name, their phone number, their occupation, the country that they live in, because I'm telling you, we have a global platform, okay? So the country they live in and the notes, okay? So keep this list with you. At least, if you want to have a like, moderate success, at least have 100 people on the list. We only make two sheets. You can go home and make more if you want to, okay? I recommend you make at least a list of 200 names. You can keep on adding. You know, you might not, in one sitting, you might not be able to jot all the names, but as you go through, you will find those names. Just don't prejudge. Just, just put it, put it right here first, okay? Make that list. This is the easiest thing to do, and yet it's the easiest thing not to do. How many of you made the list so far? Show of hands. 
Now, if you ha finish that list, well, only half the room went up, so we, we got some work to do, okay? <laughs> it is so important for you to make the list. Because once you have that list, that is the beginning of your business plan. Now, what are we gonna do with the list? I'm gonna give you some golden rules. What you're gonna do with the list, you're gonna sort through the list. And the golden rules are this, is this. 80% of your wealth will come from people that's not on this list. Over 80% of your wealth will come from people that's not on this list. Why do you need this list? Because it's not what these people will do. It's whom they will lead you to that will help create your wealth. This is extremely important. I say it one more time. 80% of your wealth will come from people that's not on this list. But these people on the list, they will be a door opener for you to tap into the world. Five and a half years ago, when I started this industry again, I was a stay-at-home mom. I'm still a stay-at-home mom. And so I only had a window of time to hit the phone and call my friends. So I made a list of 203 people on my list. And I called each and every single one of them. Of the 203 people that I called, you know how many joined me? 17. <laughs> only 17 joined me. And you might have better luck and better, better, better closing than I did, okay? So 203 people, 17 joined me. But that's all it took for me to make a fortune. With these 17 people that say yes to me, that means how many say no? 185. See, most people after 20 knows they go, oh, I just think that's it. I'm gonna quit, it doesn't work for me. Uh-uh. I went on and continued to sort because my, I knew that all I need is a few people from this list that will work it, that will lead me to good people. Well, from these 17 people that went to, that say yes, did all of them work? Uh-uh. One and a half person worked. That one person is Robert, the other per half person is Tina, okay? And I didn't sponsor Tina. It was through somebody else that led me to Tina. Well, with that, it cranked over to all over China, okay? So with these seven, so one and a half people, would they start engaging to work? In two years time, through the collective effort of everyone, my business went to 224 countries and territories. Two years. Two years, my, my sales organization, my group, not me, the whole team developed to over 200, I think 240,000 distributors, two years. Not one person. From how many? 17, actually one and a half, okay? Later on, obviously, when we have success, the story started spreading, then the other people started working the business, okay? But it does take some crazy people that see the vision, see the vision, and go out and go to work, okay? So, question is, are you willing to dig? Remember, not everybody here will join you, and not everybody joining you will work. You just have to accept and embrace that rule. Okay? So are we cool, cool so far? Are we all gonna make the list? Yes. Okay, now once you make that list, you put your name up here. And I recommend that you give your list to your upline, the person that you work with. And say, so listen, this is my list, I want you to commit, I want, I'm committing to you and I want you to commit with me to help me work my list. So you give a little background and, and you know the person that will, I, as I go on the presentation, I'll share with you how to invite and how to sort your list, okay? So this is clear so far. You all understand the importance of making that list, okay? Now, <clears throat> after you make that list, so we will make that available uh, for, for you guys that are here later on today, okay? Now, <clears throat> number four. You have your goals in life, like your short-term goals and near-term goals, and then you, you believe in those goals, your business plan, okay? You make a list, then you are going to also, the next thing you need to have is set a business goal. Now, our entire compensation plan is based on a position, that's what we call the foundation of the compensation plan. And that's, I will have, we have it right here. The foundation of our compensation plan is what we call the sapphire, okay? A qualified sapphire. A qualified sapphire, we have a map right here, if I can find it. We have a map right here <coughs> that gives you the road map. I will find it later. 
It's a roadmap of what you need to do. And I think this is, oh, right here. It's very important. You need to set a business goal. This is your foundation roadmap. As you sort through your list, we're gonna teach you how to sort through your list. Your job, this is your found, the basic foundation, okay? You, this is you right here. You put your name, the day that you join, and from today on, if you're not a qualified Sapphire yet, I want you to set a goal to become a qualified Sapphire. And you put your target date right here. You're gonna put you here. Now, your job is to identify initially to find 12 people that would join you. It doesn't matter what package, the smallest package and above it's okay. As long as you find 12 people that would say, yes, I wanna change, yes, I wanna be part of this, okay? So you found 12 people, and if you notice, some are lighter color, the way we recommend you do the placement is the lighter color one, you put four people on the private leg. The person that brought you here, when they go over the compensation plan, this is not a compensation plan training, but when a compensation plan training will teach you what common leg means and what a, what a common leg and private leg means, okay? So you put four people on the private leg, and you put, I mean, I'm sorry, four people in the common leg with your upline, and the other eight people, you put it in the private leg, okay? So once you put the 12 people's name, well, when, when, the way I would do it, let's say, for example, let's say that I talk to Lisa. I said, Lisa, Lisa, I got involved with the business. You know, do you want to be a part of this? And whatever the pitch might be. And she goes, yes. I said, Lisa, I'm going to pencil you in my hair. I'll see how committed you are. Okay? So if you're committed, I'm going to change from a pencil to a pen. Okay? Because if you're not working, I'm going to erase you out of my, my roadmap. Okay? So I put Lisa's name right here. The first thing that I do is I'm going to teach Lisa how to duplicate, how to go and sponsor two people. So once Lisa sponsored one on the left, one on the right, this is done. You need to do that with 12. When this is done, you become a qualified Sapphire. This should be everyone's first goal, business goal, to become a qualified Sapphire because this is the cornerstone of our compensation plan. And I promise you, if you get everyone on your team to do this, to come see this picture, you just that will blow out this comp plan like never before. That will be totally explosive growth, okay? So this is very crucial. Your roadmap, your, your foundation roadmap, okay? Now, last but not least, the most important factor is to teach your team member, teach others to do the same. Simple. You teach other people to do the same thing that we just share with you. Guess what you have done when you've done that? You have taken yourself out of the issue. You have successfully duplicated yourself. I mean, you, if you, you can't sleep one of these days, one of these nights, you know what you could do? You can do some math. If you say you, okay, you, you sponsor 12 people and those 12 people also sponsor 12 other people, okay? You do the math. You wouldn't be able to sleep for months. It would be humongous. Now, obviously, do we live in a perfect world? No, we don't. Will everybody you bring in sponsor two or 12? No, some people do what they've always done, which is nothing, okay? Some people will sur surpass you. Some people will sponsor a lot more than 12. Let me ask this question. How many people in this room have sponsored more than 12 people? Raise hands, show of hands. Wow, look around you. That's amazing. Keep your hands up because I want people to see it. Wow, give a big round of applause. I mean, this is amazing, it's amazing. I mean, I've sponsored so totally closer to 50 people so far, okay? Because, I mean, I'm telling you, the opportunity sells itself. So this is very important for duplication. So you, not only will you have to have this roadmap, you have to have your team have this roadmap. Say, you know what? If you're gonna quit on me, it's okay. I wanna erase you out of my business plan. So you put an eraser, erase them out of them. If they're really committed, then you put them in pen, okay? So your job is to teach your people to duplicate this, okay? Now, next, let's talk about the system. With this list, how do we make this work? Would you like to work smart or you like to work hard? Smart. I like to work smart, okay? So how do we work smart? It's how do you attack, go about and attack your business plan. This is what you do. You need a system to help you. So that is not always about you, okay? So let's talk about the system. Now, what exactly is a system? A system is a series of events that will help you promote your business and that will also help you in supporting your business. So it's a series of events that will help promote and support 
your business. So why do we need a system? We need a system to make it what? Duplicatable. Because if you always go around and talk to people, talk to people, talk to people, pretty soon you run out of people, okay? And pretty soon you can never take vacation no more because you're all busy running around, okay? So to make your business to sustain the group, to sustain the growth of your business, you need to learn to plug your people into the system. Why? Because the system provides an environment for your business to nurture and for your business to flourish. It is very important because as we go outside the society, are people negative? Are they people negative? Yes. Absolutely. But when you have an environment that you plug your people in a system, in a positive environment, people feel empowered. People feel educated. People get inspired. People build credibility and believability. Then they will go to the next level. Because I'm telling I can see every group, I can see the group will grow or the group will rindle and, and die. If your group doesn't plug in, eventually the outside influences will kill it. But if you put people into the system, there's sun, there's love, there's water, your people will flourish. People will, you know, because it's not about you anymore. Because if you and I keep going seeing the same old people, they go, of course you tell me the same thing because you're my sponsor. But if they attend a meeting, they attend one of they put them in the system, they go, wow. There's other people that they've never met before, but they're saying the same thing that you are saying. What did that do? That helped build credibility and believability for your team, okay? So this is very important that you have the environment. Now, so what are the events? What are some of the events? What is the part of the system? So a system is nothing more than training and, and a series of events where people can plug in and attend, okay? So I'm gonna go over a list of the systems. Okay, now, first, <coughs> The major part of the system is what we call BOM, or also known as OPP. BOM stands for Business Opportunity Meetings. Or well, sometimes in, in this industry, they refer to it as OPP, Opportunity Presentation, okay? So BOM or OPP, this is where we showcase the business. And it's important that you pluck your people in here because a lot of times, if let's say I go and talk to, to, to Jane, okay? Jane right here, let's say she and I go way back. She goes, well, what do you know about skincare? What do you know about this? So she would, it's different if I take her and let someone else do the talking. They go, wow, you know what? I can see myself doing this. I can just bring my friends and I can, you know, plug them in and I can sit there and clap. And I, I think I could do this. So it's important that they see a sense of duplication. Say, oh, this is simple to do, okay? So OPP, training. We have training events, okay? We have Super Saturdays, we have DVD trainings, training events, okay? We have DVDs. I mean, you know, your leaders have worked hard to put everything together to, to, to help you. So we have training DVDs, we have opportunity DVDs, and right now in English and in Chinese, okay? And also, we have flip charts. Actually, we're in the process of revising the flip chart because there's some exciting stuff I'll announce at the end. So later on, we're gonna have a new flip chart. Now, a flip chart is a great way to showcase a business because a lot of times as I travel, I don't like to use my laptop to present unless I present to a big crowd. If you present a big crowd like this, a laptop seems more professional. But if you do a small group, session, I much rather do a flip chart. Because if I do a flip chart, I go, wow, I could do that. All she does is flip, flip, flip. I can do this. You see what I'm saying? So I want to do a, a way to make it simple so that they can conceive and make it more duplicatable. Okay? So flip chart later on, coming soon. Okay? Now, also we something we call PBRs. What is PBRs? Private business receptions. These PBRs can be done at a home, these PBRs can be done in a restaurant. It, it could be done in any setting that's neutral, okay? So private business receptions. Then we also have webinars. Now, I mean, we have Samson. We also have another gentleman from United Kingdom, UK. They do weekly webinars. And you can access your webinar information in your back office. When you go to your back office, you click on the mailbox. There is instructions how to participate in the webinar. I mean, nowadays with the internet age, a lot of people, they go, oh, I wanna just, can I listen to the meeting over the internet? Absolutely. So the internet, the webinars, will provide a means for your contacts anywhere in the world, 
as long as they have internet access, they can plug in and they can watch a presentation. Some, you don't have to do any work. You don't have to even talk. Somebody will do the guide, Samson, or somebody will guide you. They, they will go through the whole presentation. It takes about 30 minutes on the webinar, okay? Then you have the corporate website. The corporate website is a great tool. <coughs> Under the corporate website, if you click on media, there is an eight minute opportunity of DVD, I mean, opportunity uh, uh, media, a film. Eight minutes, that will talk about the business and explain the business for your people. So one of the ways you can expose your list by the means in which you sort your list is by plugging into one of these means to help you sort your list. And we're gonna talk about how to invite the people on that list onto the system, okay? So also we have uh, conference calls. We have conference calls. Also, another event which is very important is what we call three-way calls. Three-way <coughs> calls is, it goes like this. It's you, your, let's say for example, your upline, you, your upline, and, or the upline or the expert, and the prospect. That's called three-way call. Three, I love doing three-way calls because one, there's no geographic boundary. They can use it very easy. And the other thing is, it's a very good way of duplication. If I've done three-way, let's say for example, let's say I'm working with Yvonne. If I've done several three-way calls for Yvonne, after a while she got the pitch, then she then can do a three-way call with her people. So then what I have done is I've just taught her on how to do three-way call, okay? Now, the other thing, it's great, great uh, system, it's called the one-on-ones. One-on-ones or two-on-ones is small gathering. Let's say, for example, if Luz want me to talk to her prospect, then she will invite her prospect to a Starbucks coffee or to whatever. Then I sit down, get to know a little bit about her prospect, and I'm going to explain to the prospect what it is, okay? And then I just showcase the business. So that one-on-one -on -one is also very effective. Now, when I do one-on-one, -on -one, I always like to have the person that invite the prospect there for two reasons. One for that trust. Let's say for example, if Lisa invited Luz, okay? And Lisa doesn't even show up. And here I am, doesn't know Luz, and Luz doesn't even know me. And I'm just trying to pitch her a business. So she will look at me as a business person. There's no trust factor there. And so it's important that Lisa be there. Why? Because not only am I teaching her this business, it's part of duplication and very important to close a deal that between her and her, they have a relationship, they have a trust factor. So it's important that she's there so that we can duplicate this business model, okay? So, you know, we, how many of you heard the saying that monkey see, monkey do? In this business, it's really like monkey see, monkey do. You gotta, I mean, if you really want to succeed in this business, let's not kid ourselves. It does require time. It does require dedication of your time. The only difference between me yourself and some of the top money earner is time and effort. I spend a lot more time and a little bit more effort perhaps than you did with this business, okay? So now, is this clear so far, the system? We understand about system, right? Now, there's one thing that I do that we gotta be very clear on. If you wanna make a fortune, what you do is you promote event. All I do is I promote events. I know some of you love to promote product. That's all great. That would be a little bit sm slower approach. If you promote opportunity, you drive fortune. Because when people join the opportunity, they take the product, they know how great the product is when they start in taking the product. But amazing ha thing happens when people start engaging the business. It, you know, it, it's we're all human. Sometimes when there's money involved, people have a more tendency to push further and faster than if there's nothing involved. So, you know, and also, when I promote events, I know that if they don't join me in the business, at least I get them as a customer. But if you start promoting products, if they don't buy the product as a customer, guess what? You lose them as a distributor. So you always promote events, promote events, events, events. Because our whole entire business model, you know what's built based upon? It's all built based upon impending events. What's impending events? This event, after this event, there's another event. There's another event. It's always impending events that you gotta be able to learn to pluck your people into the event. That's what propel your business to the next level, okay? So, promo event. Now, we all heard the saying called the five M's, right? What's five M's? More meetings means more money, okay? So five M's, more 
More meetings means more money. If you make a lot of money, try to plug in a lot of meetings and bring prospect with you. Just don't make it complicated. Just invite people. Say, come check something out. I'm excited. I want you to be a part of something. Have them come check it out, okay? So five M's. All right, now. So the next thing I want to share with you, some of the meeting conduct that you need to have. Because a meeting is the environment where we showcase a business, right? So having said that, it's important we know how to conduct in a meeting, okay? Now that meeting is uh, it's our, the face of the business. So how do we conduct ourselves in a business, in a meeting? The meeting conduct. One, it's very important. Please be professional. Okay? Two, please participate. Okay? It's important that you participate. I mean, we don't need rah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need any of that stuff, okay? But we need you to carry a smile on your face and cross your arm and sit up straight because you know why? How many of you agree with me? It's not easy to be up here and talk. It's not, okay? So the speaker is only as good as the audience. So if you're all like this and all, you know, twist and they know all that, the speaker look at you, they all that nervous and they go get this stuff, okay? So we need your participation. It's very important you carry a smile. Look, we are here, and I know someone said, oh my gosh, I hope she's not telling the same old joke again. I heard that joke a thousand times. Listen, if you heard that joke a thousand times, we probably told that joke a thousand times. <laughs> we told that joke not for you, for your prospect, okay? So we need you to really participate, and if, 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 if the speaker say, who would like to make some extra money? Just raise your hand. If your prospect sitting next to you, they don't raise your hand, you know what you do? You nudge them a little bit, so no, you do. You know, and so kind of have fun a little bit and participate. We don't need any rah, 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 but we do need smiling faces, participation, because you want your prospects to feel the warmth from the meeting. So can we participate? Yes. Thank you. Well, you guys are good, okay. <laughs> Keep it up like that, okay? I'm doing like this in the training, the real deal. <laughs> so uh, we need your help, we need to participate, okay? It's very, very important, okay? And also, be on time. Okay, very, very important. Okay, now, also, it's very important that we, um, when, you are, when you're sitting in the room, please don't always look back. Because if you, especially if you sit in the front, and then you keep looking back, guess what everybody will do? They will look back. And it could be the very, very point that the speaker made, it might have helped you close a deal. But then because you turn, everybody turn and they miss the point and we'll lose a deal, okay? So it's very important that you don't look back. And then don't go digging your purses during the meeting. Don't do that. I ever see people start digging and making all kinds of noises. Okay, so I need your help. I mean, that's part of the professionalism, okay? And also, don't talk during the meeting, okay? Too many times, people start talking during the meeting, okay? Don't talk. And don't walk around. Don't start getting up and walking in and out. It's very distracting. I mean. Last time we did a meeting, and somebody's sitting down, and then in the meeting, in a, in, at the height, I thought it was at the peak of the presentation, right? The lady got up and strolled back, and got a cup of coffee, and strolled back up here. I'm like, I'm thirsty too, but I'm up here. You better stay down here with me, okay? So it's important that, you know, we, we don't walk back and forth, and, and, and uh, also don't talk. If you have to translate, just do a very, very low voice in the back. If you have to translate, don't, don't, don't sit up in the front, because it could distract other people okay and also very important is to sit with your prospect okay because too many times I see people coming to a meeting they'll say you know what okay Jane you're my guest sit in the million dollar seat the front row okay I'm gonna go in the back and hang with the big boys <laughs> no you gotta sit down with them because you you want to know what point that she or he likes you want to be a part of the thing okay so look you are part of this. We need, we're putting this whole show. For whom? For your prospects. So we need your participation. It is very important, okay? So these are some of the meeting conducts that we would like for you to, to, it will help. The environment, I tell you what, the best meeting is when you come to a meeting where people feel like a family. There's warmth. People feel happy. I mean, you know, not everybody join right away to make money. Some people say, you know what? I just love this atmosphere. We had a, a doctor. This is camp coming to the meeting. I said, why? You're so busy with your practice. He says, you know what? I feel so positive when I come here. 
I mean, he doesn't make much money, but he just keeps coming. He says, you know, I'm stressed at work, but when I come here, I'm happy. I like to be surrounded by positive people. So you have no idea why people plug in. Obviously, we want him to make money and bring guests, you know? So anyway, so that's that, meeting conduct. We're okay now, right? Now, before we talk about how to invite, I want to share with you one of the very important factors that's very crucial on the invitation, and that's the art of edification. Edification, okay? You have to, if you really want to build an international business, you really have to learn to master the art of edification. Now, what is edification? It goes something like this, okay? A, B, C. Who is the A? The A is the expert, or your upline, or whoever you're working with. Who's a B? B is you. Who's a C? C is the prospect. Before any events, I always like to tee up or edify the event, okay? So now, you might be asking who is the expert? The S expert is anybody but you, okay? I mean, some of you heard the story before, but if you want to talk to my family, I don't talk to them. You guys, would, if you talk to my family about taking Luminaires and, and Reserve, they will take it. If I tell them, probably take me ages to get them to, to take it, okay? Because why? It's the out of town profit kind of thing. It's like, how many of you heard the saying that the, the next door grass is greener? The, greener is, the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. It's just like that, okay? So you gotta edify, you gotta learn to edify. Now, reason for that is because you understand the psychology when you recruit, okay? Between you, and your prospect, you guys have a relationship, right? So therefore, they trust you and therefore they want to listen, okay? So between you two, you have a trust factor here, right? Now, your job and your role as a distributor is to tee up. Tee up or also known as edify. To tee up the expert. Why? Because when you tee up the expert, your prospect will respect what the expert have to say. Because if, you know, like for example, if Bill Gates is coming to LA, wanna do a symposium on, on, on technology and you're really into technology, will you go? Yeah. Absolutely, because Bill Gates has been teed up by media. Well, in our business, the media is us. We are the word of mouth. So how we do is we tee up the experts, okay? So your job is to tee up the expert. Now, what should you say in tee up? Teeing up, edifying, it means, it means to edify truth, not to add a lie, okay? So don't go exaggerate so much, like, oh, this lady making 100,000 a week. Not yet, okay? So, but you edify the good traits of that person that you, it doesn't have to be, maybe the person you're working with right now, they don't, they don't have, they don't make a whole lot of money yet. It's okay, maybe they have some good qualities that you like about that person. It could be they're very caring, they're wonderful, Whatever profession they are in, they're very, they care about people, they love to help people. So what are those good traits are? You want to edify that to your prospect. Because in business, when you have trust plus respect, you know what you get? You get a deal. You get a sale, okay? So this is very important to understand the psychology behind all this, edification. Get good at edifying. Get really good at edifying. The person you're working with, I mean, the experts, anybody but you. Uh, I mean, it could be they're very hardworking, they care a lot about people. Uh, this, I mean, whatever it is that, that, I mean, the way I, I mean, I edify many of you guys, you just don't know, okay? I edify April, I edify Yvonne, I edify Tina, I edify Cece. I mean, you have no idea. I, all I do is I go around the world and I tell you guys stories. And when I'm in their part of town, not at home, guess whose story I tell? I tell your story. When I'm over, I mean, I'll tell their story, so vice versa. So this business is, you gotta master on how to edify and how to tell a story, okay? So this clear on the edification process? Okay, now next. After you learn how to edify, let's talk about how to invite, okay? Inviting, I usually break it down to three approaches. I mean, you know, there's other different forms of approach, but I like to break it down to three simple approach. First is a more direct approach. 
um, one of the, the, the ways, the approach would be, if it's a direct approach, I will call my friends. Remember on that list? Now, your job, remember, the art of recruiting, and there's some golden rules. Inviting is part of recruiting, okay? When you invite and when you recruit, it's important that you do not be a super salesman. Don't go and convince and beg your people, no. Your, your job to invite people is you have to learn to be a helping friend. You have to become a helping friend rather than a super salesperson selling the product, selling the opportunity. No need, okay? You have to be a helping friend. How do you become a helping friend? You have to identify what their needs and wants are. So when you make the list, the way I identify when you invite, you have to be sensitive to their needs and their wants. Okay? Because when you invite, if you know what their needs are and you can provide a solution for that need, you gotta sell. Okay? So when you make that list, when you call your list, how you do that? First is you try to identify, to identify what the need, you need to talk using the, the, the what I call form. Okay? What form stands for, F stands for family. How's the family going? How are the kids? How's your husband? How's your parents? So I usually take no more than two minutes on the form. Don't go to a whole 30 minute dissertation about finding out about everything. No need, because time is money, okay? So form, how, how's your family? O stands for occupation. How's your job coming along? How's your business, okay? People like to know you care, okay? So ask them how the occupation is, how the business is, and recreation. Have they do, what do they do for fun? Have they, done it, have, they gone, have they gone to vacation or whatnot? The reason why you wanna ask these kind of questions is you want to find out what the hot buttons are. If you tell them that, if you tell them that, hey, have you taken a vacation lately to Hawaii? They go, you kidding me? With the economy like this, I can't even make ends meet. Well, that's, you found the hot button, okay? So that's how you have a uh, um, recreation. M stands for money. Okay, so through this form, you identify what the wants and needs are, then you're gonna go with a direct approach. So let's say I spend about a minute or two trying to find out you know, what the hot buttons are. And let's say for example, if I ask how the kids are, I say, oh yeah, kids are great, but you know what, they need braces. <coughs> and I say, oh, where are you gonna go get it done or whatever, they go, oh, you kidding me? You know, money's tight right now, I can't get it done. Now you got a hot button right there. So I would say, listen, Lisa, if I can show you a way where I can help you get those braces, might you be open? If I can show you a way to make the money to get the braces for your kid, might you be open? Or maybe say, I, you know, some people say, hey, you know, my kid's about to go to college, I need money. So listen, if I can show you a way, I don't talk about genes, adult stem cell, none of that stuff. I said, if I can, the direct approach is, if I can show you a way to what? To fulfill their needs. If I can show you a way to dot, 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 might you be open? I didn't say, will you join me? I said, might you be open to learning more? It's very non-threatening. Might you be open to learning more? Now, usually most people make the mistake when they recruit, you know what they do? They become a super salesman. They, they do what we call the verbal diarrhea. I start talking about oh what those themselves. We have 248 factor. Then we have resveratrol. All of the media. Blah, blah, blah. And then guess what? You lose your prospect because in their head they go, I can't repeat what you just told me. I mean this is a hard sell. Too much for me. But if you care, I always like to do from the business opportunity approach because from that you get people to engage in action and they stay with the business longer. If you get them in a, in a product, they be you, so let me test the product, let me try it, then a month go by, oh I forgot to try it, you know? So it, it's important that you engage them in something that's near and dear to their heart, okay? So find out what their needs and wants are and go directly to, on, on the approach. If I can show you a way, it's very simple. You find out what their needs are and say, oh that's all great, and listen. Oh you can say, listen, I came across something amazing. And if I can show you a way how, whatever the matter, how to, how you can da 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 da, might you be open? And if they say, sure, your job is to plug them to the meeting. Don't go, oh, okay, 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 I'm gonna show you, okay? Then you start doing a flip chart thing. Don't do it. 
Remember, recruiting is a process, not an event, okay? It's just like cooking, you know? Like you go from a ba first baseball, the first ba the baseball, first base, second base, you know? And then, you know, later on you hit a home run, okay? And you don't hit a home run every time. Okay, remember, this is the, I think this example might help you remember better. When you recruit, most people when they recruit, they are so anxious to, to, to like, to attack their, their prospects, to dump them everything, because you want to so bad to recruit them. Just kind of chill out. This example might help you. You think of recruiting like dating. When you first go on dating, you hold hands, right? You go out first, and then you go hold hands, and feelings right, you hold hands, and feelings right, you kiss, and then whatever, right? You don't go boom, that right away. So you gotta do a process. You have to remember, it's a process. And when you ask a question, you have to pause. You let them, you hear them what they want. If you, would you be open? You know, we got this adult stem cell that I could move with, and he's like, on and on and on. They, you can give them a chance to respond to you. Okay, so give people a chance to respond to you, because you have no idea. People, usually what I learned in sales, sales 101, is when you ask a closing question, the first person speaks, loses. So when you ask a closing question, don't speak. Let them, and sometimes uncomfortable. I mean, I had that happen a point in my, in my life when I asked a closing question. I mean, there was five minutes in silence. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they're thinking. But you know, you, you're anxious, you're not, you can't wait. And I learned to bite my lips and just wait. <laughs> you have to do that. Let them, let them, if it's too long, you're uncomfortable, just get to, to, I'll be right back. I'm gonna hit the restroom, I'll be right back. Let them think, you know, so, okay. Direct approach, or another direct approach. I mean, I personally, I don't like script because it's gotta come from your heart. Because it's a script, people go, oh, that's a salesperson. They're trying to sell me something, okay? Now, a more direct approach would be something like, you know what, uh, how are you? You know, long time no see, and, and how's the family, blah, blah, blah. And after two minutes, maximum two minutes. I said, listen, the reason for this call is business. I just came across an amazing opportunity that I believe it might be for you, it might not be for you. But I just wanted to know if you're open to making some side, side income or whatever. Them. If they know that they only want some side income, you talk about fortune, they might not relate to you. But if you know that they want a fortune, so you gotta know what your prospect's hot button to pitch them what the deal is. So listen, I, I, I mean, I, I'm more a direct person. I said, listen, I just came across some amazing stuff. I heard some amazing story. i like for you to be in on the next fortune with me. When is a good time for us to get together? So I can show you. So you, the phone, the objective of the phone is to make the appointment initially. The phone is not to explain everything, okay? Once they get in, then you can use the phone to train. But initially the phone is to make phone call. To make what? Appointments, okay? To get them, invite them to come to a meeting. So after, if they, they, after you ask a question and they say, sure, what is it? So listen, you know, I'm very busy right now. I can't explain everything to you. But when is a good time this week for us to get together? The timing is very important. I'll be very busy next week, but this week, when is a good time we can get together? And let them say, well, Tuesday or Thursday. Let, let's say, for example, you live in LA, okay? And by the way, we have a meeting schedule right here. And you know that on Tuesday and Thursdays, we have presentation. I'll say, listen, you know what? When, when can we get together this week? Would Tuesday be better or Thursday be better? Don't say that we have it every week. No, no, no. Which day is better, Tuesday or Thursday? Okay, if they say, well, Tuesday, wonderful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick you up, maybe at 6.30, and I'm gonna take you to look, take a, a quick overview to see if this is for you. I'm, I promise you, you will love what you see. And keep it as brief and as short as possible, okay? So that's on the direct approach, okay? Now, the second approach is what I call the takeaway approach, okay? Sometimes I like to play with people like that, take takeaway approach, okay. The takeaway approach, it's very non-threatening. You are not asking you are not asking them directly about about the opportunity. You say, for example, I say, you know what, Yvonne, I know that you're a very successful business lady, and I know you're doing very well. I mean, you know, let, let, you don't know if they're doing well. But let's just say that you're doing well very well. Sometimes I like to do that because you know what, a lot of times on the outside of a business person, you don't know how well they're doing. They might look good on the, you know, you think a business owner might look good, but they may go through a lot of financial challenges. You don't know. So you just say, listen, I know you're doing very well. But I just engage in something, a global business, an international business. Who might you know that may be interested in making some extra money with me? Or who might you know that's interested in making about 10 grand or, or 5 grand or whatever that, that you know that will get her? Okay? Who might you know is interested in making some side income or some additional stream of income? Who might you know that's open to making an additional stream of income? If I say that, if she has a need for it, you know what she's thinking? Me. 
Why don't you ask me? See, that's called a takeaway, and it's non-threatening, okay? And you would say, listen, I am looking for some top players. I'm looking for some top entrepreneur to own a part of this international venue with me. You didn't talk about what it is. I am looking, and you are. You are trying to identify some top, top entrepreneurs to build a company within a company. So who do you know? Who's very motivated, who's self-driven. I want to talk to those people. So when I talk to her like that, she said, well, what me? Why don't, you, why don't you ask me? I said, oh, I didn't know you'd be open. You know, so just go from there and then invite her. Plug her into the event, okay? So that's called a takeaway. Who do you know? Oh, now, I mean, I don't usually go cold market, but I always go before when I was a struggling entrepreneur, I was not selective at all. Anybody within three feet of me, I go recruit them, okay? And so when I do that, I would say something like, um, hey, you drive me to any place. You drive me to Hawaii and I will recruit, okay? So if I go to Hawaii, let's say for example, and if I went to somebody, I said, listen, I'm new, and I find out some small things about them in doing the form. I said, listen, I'm here on business. I'm here from, I'm from the mainland. I'm here on business. And listen, I'm looking for some top people, very entrepreneur people, very, very self-driven. I am looking to expand my business here in Hawaii. Who do you know? That's interesting in making some side income or some another stream, having another stream of income. So that would be my approach to approach to turn that person into lukewarm. Okay? So as many, many approaches. So you know, just do what's near in your heart and, and, and just talk from your heart, okay? So now so again, the thing to, to paint the big picture to people is look, I'm with an international company, an on star international company. We're looking for some top, top talent to help us build this company in this market. Whatever market you're in, in LA, San Gabriel, whatever. I mean, so, I mean, you truly are spearheading this market. And so, um, and you can do that, the takeaway approach, okay? Now, then the other approach, you have the direct, the takeaway, and the other one is what I call the triggering interest approach. Triggering interest. So like, to, to draw the interest, and the way you would trigger the interest is by asking questions. And usually, I like to do the training questions for the professionals or for business owners, okay? Uh, perfect example. Let's say that if I know April, April has a bakery, okay? Let's say that I'm her customer, okay? I go there in and out, and I don't know her that well, but I know her well enough to say hi, because she's the owner. I say, oh, hi, you know, so I, I strike some small talks. And I said, wow, April, you're very busy. You must be doing very well here. And go, yeah, whatever, whatever, right? I said, April, let me ask you a question. How would you like that for every time your customer come here, that even if they don't come back and buy bread from you, how would you like to make money from them? Every, can you imagine every customer that stop by, even if they don't come back to your shop ever again, how would you like to make some money? Of course. I said, well, let me ask you, if they don't come back, would, would, would you make money? No, they don't. So how would you like to do that? She goes, is there such a thing? I said, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I used to live around here. And I used to, this is how I recruited a gentleman that repaired my shoes. And I was over there and I said, well, you know what? You do a lot of customer walk in and out. I said, how would you like to make money on the customer that you don't even come back? I go, wow, really? So yeah, how? Well, why don't you come meet me at this place? So I knew where I was gonna be at the meeting. I said, why don't you, now those are cold market. Cold market, I don't pick up. I don't go pick them up and take them to a meeting. I said, why don't you meet me at this place? So I said, we're gonna show you how. We're gonna show, what is it? It's about having the opportunity to make money of customers that doesn't come back, come back and see you again. Building a residual income. So have them come back and invite them to come to a, a, a neutral place, an environment, okay? So using these approaches, plug them into the meeting, the system, because the system will help you sort. Your job, listen, not everyone you list on here, if you make a list of 100 names, if you have 15 people join you, which if you have really gone through 100 names, guarantee you have at least 15 people that will join you if you do it right, okay? So if you go through this list, accept the fact that not everyone will join you, okay? And not everyone that join you will work. But if you accept that, that's very important, okay? So now, after you've done the recruiting part, once they engage with you, you need to do within 48 hours, get them to a training or you plug them to a training, or get them to, we have a training. If they can't come to the training, we have a training. We're doing it at cost. This, uh, DVDs are a dollar each, okay? So you get them a training. We're gonna make available this workshop training. As people get involved, we're gonna have a workbook and a workshop DVD so they can go and watch themselves, okay? So get them a DVD, get them trained right away. Why? Because before they go out to the real environment and get affected, guess what happened? We just give them an injection. 
That's called immunization shot. Okay, they're immune. So that the outside influences won't kill them, okay? So it's important that you get your prospect immune before they go out there. Let them be armed with the information, okay? So this is okay now? Is it clear so far on the, on the inviting? Yes. 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 Doesn't sound that strong. Yes. No, 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 no. Is it really helping you guys? Yes. Okay, I want it for real, okay? Now, so let's talk about, um, so we talk about how to invite. Let's talk about how to, when you do your inviting, you gotta do your A, B, C's. What is your A, B, C? Always be caring. You gotta be caring to your people. Always be cheering. When you're at the meeting, you gotta cheer. You gotta be happy, okay? And always be closing, okay? Look, you brought the people here, you might as well close the deal. Too many times people send them home. If you send them home, guess what? They expose the normal job, the normal thing, guess what? They forgot about everything they had learned at the presentation. So important that you do your very best. Now obviously, you, you don't force nobody to join you, but at least you say, listen, give them a platform, an opportunity, say, listen, would you, where would you like to get started? What position? So you can give them people an option. If they say no, see, if you don't ask, it's an automatic what? No. But if you ask, at least it's a chance. I mean, I have literally seen people coming back, and at the end he was so agitated. He said, no, well, listen, I've come, this is my sixth time here. Will somebody show me how to get started? Because the person born of me never even asked for the sale. So just be, just always be closing, okay, now. So how do you close? <coughs> at the end of, the, <coughs> at the, end of the, the presentation, first thing you do, at the end, most, most, most people do at the end of the meeting. They stand up and they walk. At the end of the meeting, you know what you do? You have a roll of seat right here, right? You sit next to your prospect. At the end, you take your chair and you face your prospect. And say, wonderful, do you see yourself doing this business? When you ask a question, you're not. Okay, when you're not, they have a tendency to not too, okay? <laughs> and so, and they say, you know, listen, which one would you see yourself getting started with? So which, which position, and you have different packages, which, which position, which package would you like to start your business with? You do the assumptive close, okay? They go, well, if I, I might think of the basic or whatever. Now, don't convince them to go otherwise. If they go with the basic, start enrolling, okay? They can always upgrade later. Because you start, oh, don't do the basic, you gotta do the jumbo. And you start explaining everything, and they all got confused, guess what happened? They say no. Because a confused person does what? Nothing. When they're confused, they don't do nothing, okay? So it's important when they're hot and ready to go, enroll them in the system right away. If you don't have a computer to enroll right away, you give your application. These are your tools, have your tools ready. Like the meeting schedule, the application, have it ready. And then say, good, great, Let's, let, let me show you how to get started, okay? Now, what, what's the, uh, what name would you like to get started with? And you put their name. And what, what, what would you like the check to be mailed to? Meaning I want the address, right? For the address. And I usually, and then you pick a package, I usually ask for the social last. Because usually people are very protective of the social, okay? Because you gotta warm it up. And you know, trust me, when you ask, and when you ask for the payment right there, this is what you say. You say, would you like to pay by Visa or MasterCard? I didn't get no option. Because you do the assumptive close. If you say, how would you like to pay for it? Pay? Well, let me go think about it, okay? But if I say, well listen, how would you like to pay for it? Visa or Master or American Express? And then make a bigger, bigger choice. You gotta be comfortable. Trust me, if they are not ready, you know what they will tell you? Oh, wait a minute, I'm not ready to pay right now. Which is okay, at least you've done your part. And then while you are there on how to close, while you're there, you ask them, is there anything that I can help tonight to help me make a decision tonight? Is there any question that you have? But, mm, no, not right now, I need some time to think about. That's fair enough. Well, go think about it, and I do want to get in touch with me. Just let me know, so if this is, in, is this for you or is it not for you? I'm cool with it. But you gotta be willing to ask a question. Go for the close. Because you know what? This is a story I heard and it really stick to my head. And, and, and I, thought, I thought it was real funny, but it's real pertinent. So I'll share that with you. That this is on closing, okay? There's a very, very rich guy in Texas. He's super wealthy and he's, 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 wanna, he's bored. So he wanna kinda test on human psychology, okay? So one day, he decided to throw a big, huge party at his mansion, okay? But the night before the party, he had the Olympic-sized pool. So he put water moccasin and alligator in the pool, okay? The night before. So during the party, then every, the next day, next morning, people start arriving at the party, right? So he gathered all his guests around the Olympic-sized pool. And then he made a big announcement. He says, whoever is daring enough to jump into the pool 
and to swim a pool, across a pool and come up alive, I will grant him or her anything he or she want in life. So, I mean, obviously there's a lot, a lot of people can see alligator moccasins, water moccasins in there. So nobody, I mean, it was like, people were scared. But before, I mean, right after making the announcement, guess what, he heard a loud splash. He heard this guy that was really motivated. He was like swimming record time, and like record time right across the swimming pool. And he came up. And this multi-gazillionaire was so excited. He walked over to him and said, you know what? Excuse me, young boy, young man. Tell me what is it you want. I will grant you anything you want in life. And he says, you know what? Before you grant me anything I want in life, I want to find out the name of that dude who pushed me into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so, in short, sometimes, sometimes, you see, if you know it's good, why not push, right? <laughs> sometimes in life, we, we do need a little push. It's just like, you know what, 19 years ago, if that guy didn't push me, I would never, I would have never, ever got involved in direct selling because of my wrong perception about this industry, my, my, my wrong understanding of what it was about, okay? So we do need, sometimes we do need a little push. But when you know it's good, why not? It could change other people's life, but don't force them if they're not ready, okay? So that's on closing. Now, the other one is on how to overcome objections. I'll give you the biggest secret, okay? Now, it doesn't matter what it is, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't like sales, I don't like MLM, I don't like whatever, okay? So whatever that might be. You ready for the big secret? You ready? Yes. All right, thank you, okay. It's called the three Fs, okay? The first F stands for feel. Second F stands for felt. The third F stands for found. The first thing you gotta do when people give you an objection, the first thing you gotta do is you have to identify, you have to acknowledge the feelings. Don't go against them. They go, oh, I don't have time. What do you mean you don't have time? You do nothing at home, you watch TV all the time. Don't go butt head with people, okay? Now that's something Tina would do, okay? <laughs> that's an inside joke, okay? But anyway, but don't go butt head with them, okay? Just say, you know what? I know how you feel. So you calm them down, okay? And you say, you know what? You want to relate to them. You say, you know what? I, I felt the same way too. And you share with them how you, how you feel. You, you know, how you truly felt. I mean, maybe when, you, when first someone told you about MLM, you say, you know, I felt the same way. I didn't have time for this, okay? Or I didn't have time, whatever. So you tell them how you felt, okay? The, th the third thing is, but you know what I found out? Here's what I found out. I have worked hard all these years all my life. If after all these years of hard work, I don't even have the money or the time freedom, that means I need to make a change. If I don't make a change, I'll be back to the same thing. So that's what I found out. I need to do something different. See, by you saying this way, you get your prospect to listen. Because if you go butthead with them, they ain't gonna listen to you. So you do the, the, the feel foul found. I don't have money. And you know, I get that a lot over the years. And you know what I say to them? I say, you know what, I know how you feel. Because I felt the same way too. 19 years ago, when someone showed me an opportunity, it cost me $6.95 to get involved, 19 years ago. And I said, you know what, I didn't have the money. But here's what I found out. The guy that was showing me the presentation, he said to me, Kim, how long have you been working? I said, I worked about 10 years in corporate America. He said, you mean to tell me you went to good schools, you went to UCLA, you went to UC Irvine, after 10 years of uh, hard work in corporate America, you can't even come up with 700 bucks to change your life? He said, you know what, I got news for you. He says, whatever you've been working, ain't working. Now, I didn't like it when someone, a stranger said that to you, to me. But it rang true in my ears. So here's what I found out. If I have worked hard all my life and I can't even come up with money to change my life, I need to make a change. So when you say that, the feel, felt, found, you get people to listen. Your whole objective is you try to let, I mean, everybody has their own opinion. That's all fine. But your goal and objective is try to get them to listen to what you're trying to say to them. But the way you get them to do this, you need to identify and acknowledge how they feel. Now, when they calm down, now you can go tell them how you really feel about this, okay? So the feel, felt, found almost always worked. The only time it didn't work was when someone's extremely negative, I completely give up. I said, let me listen. You don't need this, you need something else, okay? So feel, felt, found. Okay, that's how you overcome objection. Always use it, feel. I mean, you know, I've learned a lot over, I mean, Everything I've learned in direct selling the last 19 years, it helped me with my life. Not only in terms of business, in anything I do. Many people say, you know what, in direct selling, it's 
allow enable them to become a better mom, a better wife, a better you know, spouse. I mean, it really is, it really is life changing. You know, obviously, we gotta you know you join this in the beginning because of money or want to get the money issue all away. That you could do something bigger and better in life. Okay, so this is that. Okay, now next, um, we're gonna talk about the ways that you make money. Okay, with this opportunity, we make money different ways. The first way we make money is by retailing. That's small money. You know, you buy the product a wholesale, you sell some product. Most people make the mistake in direct selling is that they join an opportunity, all they do is sell product. You go broke doing that. I mean, you're gone by and say, oh my gosh, what have I done? My business is not growing. Because you're at the retailing mentality. Most people, especially conventional, traditional business owner, you know what they think? I need a storefront, I need to sell my product. Direct selling, network marketing, it's not about you selling product, it's about a lot of people selling a little bit and you override that, okay? But retailing is one of the ways to make money, small money, okay? Second way to make money is called sponsoring. The sponsoring activity will make you the now money, like immediate money. As you go out and sponsor people into the business, you can make anywhere between 25 bucks up to $200. Now why do you need this now money? Because this now money will pay for your gasoline, pays for your effort in driving your long-term residual income. By sponsoring people into the business, guess what it'll do? It will help develop your long-term residual income, okay? So the third type of income is what we call residual income. Residual income, that you once you build your network, you do something one time, but you get paid month after month after month. Now the beauty about our residual income, we get it every day. How many of you get cycle off of auto ship every day? Quite a few of you, okay? It's a wonderful feeling, okay now. So residual income, number one, is what we call cycles, okay? Number two, is what we call matching bonuses. Number three, is what we call diamond, our global pool, diamond pool. Okay, now, so this is not a compensation plan training. We will have a compensation plan training that will teach you on the different ways how we make money. But I wanna give you a quick overview that these are different ways that we make money. Obviously, the big money is right here in the residual income, okay? But you need to start from somewhere by sponsoring people in the business, then you help. This now money will help drive your residual income, okay? Now, I wanna give you just an illustration of what residual income is. And in order for, actually, you know, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about residual income because this is so important to have the right understanding of residual income. This is a one to two year plan. It's like condensing your work life into one to two years. I mean, if you could achieve financial freedom from, what, from a 50 year work life to one to two years, how many of you like that? If you knew that failing is not an option, how many will give it all you got? See, most people go through life, they're off balance. You go into work, you're off balance. But I'd much rather off balance for a short period of time than off balance for the rest of my life. So this is a one to two year plan, okay? Now to build your residual income, this sponsor bonus is great, but the objective of this business is drive a long-term residual income. Meaning, in the beginning, okay, this one right here is time. Here's money, okay? This is a picture that will help you anytime you have any doubts, any suspicion, any whatever, you look at this picture, okay? In the beginning, you probably commit a lot of time, but a little pay. I remember 18 years ago, 19 years ago, my first residual check was $14.83. That was my most exciting check. Now obviously many people don't agree with me. My mom and dad thought I went nuts, okay? I was running around the house with that $14 check and something, some change. I said, can you imagine? Can you imagine adding a couple of more zero to it? This is residual. And they go, oh my gosh, she's been unemployed too long, okay? I mean, I wasn't excited about $14, but I was excited about the concept of I don't work, but that money keep on coming, okay? So in the beginning, you do a lot of work, but little pay. But once you build a healthy organization, you will get paid for a lot of things that you didn't do because it's already built. I mean, I still remember in a previous company, my residual income a day could be a couple of grand, my previous company. Once you build a healthy organization, 
You just watch those auto ship those residual income, boom, 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 boom. And when you have a product as powerful as this one, I'm telling you, you just watch some amazing residual income that could come when you build a solid, healthy organization, okay? So just remember, this is a one to two year plan. If you wanna come in today and get rich overnight, you know, I, I think you have a lot more chance buying the lotto than getting rich overnight. Although, I mean, although many of us have quick successes, but we work hard at what we get. I mean, I don't know too many businesses. You know, you work hard for 16 months, it gives you a high, a middle, a mid, uh, uh, how many digit? Uh, five digit number. I don't know too many that they can do that, okay? Now, so, that's it. Is it six or five? No, a week, I'm sorry. How about a week? Five digit a week. No, five digit a week. I'm talking about, see, we get paid every week, so I only look at weeks, not months, okay? Uh -huh. All right. Last but not least, I want to talk about vision and now. <clears throat> this is where you are now, and this is where you want to go, okay? And I, I hope this morning session had painted enough a picture to realize that, you know, from point A to point B of what you want to, this is your goal. This is where you want it to go. This is where you are now. From point A and point B, we all have a vehicle that we use in life to make money, to generate income, okay? If your vehicle is not gonna take you to where you wanna go, I would suggest you find another vehicle. It doesn't have to be Jeunesse. It could be anything that turns you on. Change your vehicle. If this vehicle is broken, invest in yourself to get you another vehicle to get you to point B. Because you know what? This is life. This is from birth, and this is when we check out, when we finish, okay? Wherever you are now, okay? Let's say we live an 80, 90 year, year span, wherever that might be. You look at this picture where you wanna go. Look, wherever you are on this lifespan line, I hope that you wake up and say, you know what, I need to do something. If I meant to do something in life, I need to do it now. Not wait until I'm too gray and old, okay? If you could, you, you could talk to people, you could make this happen. So wherever your lifespan is, you say, look, listen, whatever I've done with my life so far, I need to make a change. The first thing is awareness. I'm aware I need to make a change. Then the second thing is real, realize that you have to make a change. And the third thing is I have to be open to a change. See, this has to come from you. You know, all the, the, this, to succeed, it requires 200%. 100% from what is it, the five pillars, from the opportunity. And the other 100% has to come from what? You. It has to come from us. Okay? So this is where you are now. This is where you want to go. So how many of you have ever stretched a rubber band? When you stretch a rubber band, is it uncomfortable? Yeah. A little bit. Because it might snap. Right? So as you stretch, it's a little bit uncomfortable. But it's, it's, this is exactly how you are right now. We are now, the current circumstances, and we want to go there. Okay? I mean... Yeah, when we check out, okay, not now, okay? So, eventually, okay? So we wanna go, the, the vision, the future, okay, now. So, when you stretch that, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Just realize that along the way, along the way, you will find there's, there's distractions. There's distractions in life, distractions in anything we do. There's distractions. There might be disappointments. There might be frustrations. There might be emotional roller coaster. Ups and downs. Your friend want to join you. Your friend want to cancel. Your friend said they will show up. Your friend didn't show up. Your friend canceled. These emotional roller coasters is part of it. But you have to keep your eye on your goal. You have to keep focus and never ever give up. When you stretch that vision, it is uncomfortable. But you know what? Just know that when you focus, when you believe, really, really, really believe and never give up, always take massive action. I mean, persistence. Don't just do something a few days and disappear for a few days. If you don't do something, you're gonna to commit to yourself and to, to the person that brought you here and say, listen, I need you to help me accountable. I need you to hold me accountable and commit me for the next six months. Do whatever it takes to succeed. When you keep that vision, when you keep that vision near and dear to your heart, doesn't matter where you are, you will achieve it. But just know that and embrace that along the way, there may be some stumbling blocks, there may be, it's okay. It's all part of the process. Because 
It is life. It is a golden rule. I mean, the golden rules in, in, in recruiting and anything else. Is that what we call the four SWs, right? Some will. Remember the four SWs? Four SWs, one N, right? Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Next. There's always someone waiting. You have no idea who, who's next that want to change your life. You have no idea who's next. They're really like, like as if lightning strike, I'm like, whoo, I woke up now. I mean, I really woke up along the way as a human being. I mean, how many of you saw the movie Matrix many, many years ago, okay? Matrix, you know, I mean, that was my first awakening. I mean, like most people are like in society getting up, going to work. It's like there's a scene that really spoke to me. It's that like most people are like zombies, like robots in and out of life. But it took somebody to break through and say, you know what, I got the code, I broke through. I am the one, you could be the one that break through, break free from all that mundane thing that we get so caught up with daily living. See, I really believe, it's, 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 the, the, society has gotten to a point, I believe, it, it's a point of awakening, that you know what, we gotta do something more meaningful. There, there's gotta be something more meaningful than the daily, let the daily life living, living out of, getting the life out of you. There's gotta be something better. And so, as you go through that journey of awakening, you can do something more meaningful. I mean, I want you really, and not to put down your job or your business, really look at your daily life and, and the work that you do. I mean, we all love our family. We all love, you know, taking care of the family, but the kind of work that you do, is it consuming you? Or are you, are you being consumed by it? Or is it giving you purpose and a sense of meaning? See, only you know that. You know, obviously, we don't want you to go tomorrow and go to your job and I'll quit your job. No, 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 don't do that, okay? You gotta, you know, but work harder on yourself than your job. Because if we don't, that lifespan, wherever you are, when would you want to make that change? When would you want to make that happen? And so, when you stretch that, it will be uncomfortable, but I tell you what, it is the most rewarding thing I do. I mean, I often ask myself, what would I, I mean, I am blessed at a point in my life I can do anything I want. But there's nothing else I would do different. My husband said, you know, Kim, you're a workaholic. I got up at four o'clock this morning. My husband said, you know, you're a workaholic. I, I said, this, I love what I do. And when you love what you do, you know, it just, it just shows in your work. And, and not too often in life you get to do what you love to do. You get to help other people touch your life and change your lives. And at the same time, you got paid awesomely by it. And you get reward awesomely by it. You know, so, it is a true, true blessing of what direct selling has given me. And I do hope that through my example, um, it will help inspire other professionals to join this cause because it is a phenomenal ground. It is true, there are some bad raps out there about network marketing, but you know what? There are also some great companies out there that are making a difference in people's lives. And so I hope that this seminar, this workshop, it, it, it's a means of helping you to realize, you know what? It is okay to be, and be proud of what you got a hold of. And you know, and, and really, the process of awakening, say, you know what, we could do something different collectively. If you don't need money, there's many, many people that they can use our help. And so, and, and in closing, I wanna share this with you, is that, you know, some of you heard this story, and some of you maybe haven't, but the last Christmas, I spent a very meaningful a holiday with my son and my husband, and we went to Bali, and we went to Vietnam, and, and it, it's, it just, it's, it's like as if it's coming a full circle. I mean, 19 years ago, I got started direct selling. It was for means of survival. I need to make money because I got downsized. I had a house in North San Gabriel. I had a brand new Mercedes back at that time. And I was three months away from losing all that. You know, when you got, you, you just, when you got downsized, I mean, I never thought one day I'd be downsized. But when it happened, I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I didn't even know how I was able to, Manage to keep all those credit cards, all those debts along the way. I mean, I thought at a job, if you make 100000 a year back at those times, it's pretty good, right? I thought I was doing pretty good 100000 a year as a corporate executive. But guess what? When the, the ax came, I was lost. I didn't know what to do. So I got involved in direct selling. In the beginning, it was for money, for survival. I need to keep my means. I need to keep my lifestyle. I need to keep my house. And so, but along the way, it gave, me, it gave me purpose in life, it gave me meaning. So once you get the money issue out of the way, it's like you want to do more. I, I don't know, it's just you become more loving. It, it, it's hard to describe that feeling. But when I was, um, so I took my son uh, uh, to Vietnam. And so and me and my son and then Winnie went with me. And so we went to visit the school that I built a couple of years ago. And I tell you, the feeling I got 
when I got off the van, it took about an hour and a half to drive in, into the deep village. And when we got off the van, I, it just tears just rolled down my eyes because it was a little, very small gesture, things that I thought I did, a small gesture of kindness, but I didn't know the lives that it impacted. I mean, the, that, that school housed 153 children, ages from seven to 11. I mean, and because of that school, the government had moved some of the older schools and built a brand new school for uh, high school and, and the other school right next to it. So, meaning I wanted, the reason I want to share with you is not to brag, don't get me the wrong way, is that you have no idea. Sometimes a mere act, it made me think, oh, I'm just recruiting somebody. Maybe through this kind of work, you may be able to touch other people's lives and save other people's lives. We have many, many amazing, amazing testimonials. Some of you perhaps saw in Yuku or YouTube. I mean, mostly right now it's in Chinese because Taiwan is just smoking right now with amazing, amazing results. And we are now in America, in North America, getting great results as well. And so what I share with you is really whole, take your dreams near and dear to your heart and believe believe that you could do it. Because 19 years ago, each and every single one of you had more money than I did. I was broke. But you know what? Because of this platform, I become a multi-millionaire. And I say that in, in, very humbly to you. I mean, I, when I was working on my material, and uh, it, it really, it, it's very satisfied feeling. Because I've seen a lot of trainers to talk about income and expenses. And most people only do train. But I'm blessed to realize that, you know what, I'm at a point in my life financially, it's like, no worries. That is a great feeling. And being able to also help other people to do the same thing. When I heard from Tina and Samson and, and, and Winnie and, and other people, how I mean, Jason in Taiwan, how well they're doing financially, it's like you have no idea. It's like watching your kids when your kids become very successful and very famous and very well, you become very proud, very happy. Well, that's the feeling. And so I do hope that it, it, this seminar, this workshop gives you the know-how, but more imp importantly, it gives you the belief and the inspiration of going a step further, doing something with your life. And I do hope it's Janice. If not, find something. Find something that fires you up. It's okay. Go through that journey. There might be ups and downs. It is part of the process. It's a journey. So hang on tight, plug your people in here because it's these events that will help drive your business to the next level. And so um, well, to close with that, we have, this is the February schedule of all the events that we have. When your people sign up right then and there, give them one a flyer, have them plug in the next one and also get a DVD. I, I think we only got limited of these DVDs right now, but we can order some more. These DVDs, get your people to get them trained right away, okay? If not for the business, people will do it for health. People will, will use the product for health, okay? So I hope it's meaningful, I hope it's helpful to you, and I do hope to see you very soon on Tuesday right here in Rosemead. And today's what? Tuesday. Ah, Tuesday. Oh, tonight! Okay, tonight right here. And then Thursday is at the, no, tomorrow, tomorrow morning in Walnut, Thursday, Walnut. Yeah, I forgot already. Okay, so anyway, I mean, Ed, when you get up, I mean, I, I literally sleep about three hours a day, okay? But I love what I do. So with that, I thank you very much and hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much.